Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome to a new series in Planet Zoo, our first proper zoo here in Planet Zoo actually, it's really exciting stuff. I did want to take a week of just kind of playing the game, figuring it out, messing around with a few different habitats before I really settled on a theme uh, based on the animals in the game and this is it. Luckily there are a few animals in the game that fit what I wanted to do, uh, so I've had this one on the sort of back burner for a little while now, wanting to, co uh, wanted to sort of start producing it, so really happy to be able to bring it to you today. Uh, this zoo is called Nuna Kanata, which is um, Inukitut for uh, the land of Canada or the Canadian land. Uh, Inukitut is the uh, the language of the eastern Inuit population of Canada and um, parts of Alaska and other places as well. Uh, this is a culture I am recently learning about since moving to Canada myself and I find it absolutely fascinating. Uh, so the uh, the zoo here in question is going to be taking references from Inuit culture, uh, but also um, from sort of northern Can Canadian culture in general, and also North American culture in general as well. So uh, we're going to be having some uh, areas that are relatively realistic as far as uh, Inuit life goes, but then also it's going to be a little bit of a kind of Disney sheen on it as well, a little bit more like Frontiersman, Davy Crockett, uh, Grizzly Adams, that kind of thing as well for a lot of the building structures. Uh, because to be honest with you, modern uh, Inuit buildings are pretty much just like uh, North American buildings. They're relatively uh, sim uh, simple structures, and um, so really, we I wanted to kind of go for the whole log cabins and uh, you know stone hearths and all that kind of thing. Uh, think Wilderness Lodge from Disney. That, that that kind of look is what we're going for for a lot of the structures. But I do want to get some of the. Um, uh, Inuit heritage in here as well. Uh, as far as animals go, uh, we're going to be looking at mostly North American animals for the habitats, so timber wolves, grizzly bears, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but also, I think we're going to be having an indoor section uh, that is heated that looks at some of the uh, Central American animals as well, because there's a few Central American animals that don't really class as South American, uh, and I don't really feel like a whole uh, there's enough of them to do a whole zoo. Um, so I'm actually going to be uh, doing an indoor section of this place, like a big heated greenhouse that has things like uh, beds, tapirs, uh, crocodiles, things like that. And it's going to come a little bit down the road. Um, talking of animals, the reason I've decided what I'm doing, that's how I'm going to basically break up these series. Uh, this is not my Pinewood Hills, okay? So for those of you who don't know, Pinewood Hills was my main park in Planet Coaster. It was a British budget park um, that took the best part of three years and still isn't finished uh, to this day. There's still a few episodes left there that we will get back to uh, once the Planet Zoo sort of Russian bubble has died down a little bit. Uh, but one thing I've learned very quickly with Pinewood Hills is that tying myself down, down to one build style, one sort of architecture style, one budgetary style for pretty much the entirety of the game um, left me a little bit um, still stilted, I guess, as far as design is concerned. Um, so I really didn't want to make the same mistake again. So here with Planet Zoo, what we're going to be doing is much uh, smaller projects that we can box off and get finished within the sort of time frame of three to six months. That's going to be the plan. And the way I'm going to um, stick to that time frame and make sure that I don't get some feature creep with these zoos is by selecting the animals that are going to go into it at the very beginning based on the, uh, the sort of area that we're in. And when those animals are done, we're done with the zoo. Basically, that's how it's going to go. So here, yes, North American Park, uh, a North American sort of uh, conservation area. We're going to look at doing uh, one of the exhibits, most like the Timber Wolves, as more of a conservation project, uh, as opposed to just a straight up zoo exhibit. So we're going to be looking at creating um, some facilities there for uh, the health of the animals and also ways that uh, guests can interact with the, uh, with the program as well. Uh, so that's something I'm really looking forward to too. But today, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Uh, what are we actually building? Well, it's basically the entrance plaza of the park. Um, it's going to be quite understated. You know, most zoo um, entrance plaza I've noticed are pretty understated. It's basically just a large path plaza with a few stores in, uh, restrooms, information desks, that kind of thing. They very rarely have uh, huge weenies, um, which is a theme park term for sort of like a big, uh, a big statue or appearance thing, something like... Um, uh, you know the Disney Castle or, or something like that. You know, there's ne ne very rarely like a big main street with a big tada at the end of it. Um, so instead, they usually sort of fork off and meander through. Uh, very often, more sort of uh, 
they, they try and work with the land they've got rather than doing incredibly heavy landscaping. Um, and, and that perfectly makes sense as far as the zoo is concerned. You know, they're all about sort of nature and uh, dealing with the natural resources that they've got. Would it be very zoo-like for them to come in and completely bulldoze areas to be able to build a big fake castle or whatever? So uh, that's something I'm really... Uh, trying to keep in mind again this isn't going to be the most realistic series you know we're not talking like some of the stuff that's on the awesome bro nation server um where we where they're really really into the the the, the minutiae detail of realism builds um, I tried to do that with Pinewood Hills and I did it relatively successfully I think but again it, I, I always felt a little bit like it stunted my creativity and sometimes it's just nice to kind of build something cool because you want to build something cool so as far as sort of scale is going this is going to be relatively realistic we're not going to be having any huge floating islands or big plastic rainbows that go over the top of the park or anything like that um, but I'm not necessarily going to be so focused on making sure there's sort of staff backstage area all over the place uh, I'll do some of those if I think they're fun to do and you think I want to do them uh, but we will try and make sure that uh, it has all the facilities of a zoo um, talking of which here's our first building da 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 a restroom that you've got to have a restroom I know it's not very uh, fancy it, it's not <laughs> It does not make a great thumbnail, uh, but I did want to start off with something that I know I always forget to place down, and also the sort of building that they often have at the very front of these places, uh, and that is a restroom. Um, I'm even going to the detail here of uh, of covering up the the interior of the thing. Uh, it just looks a little bit too shiny. It's covered in tiles, you know, and this is obviously the, pretty much everything in this park is going to be built with stone or wood. It's, it's literally that simple, um, which is one of the reasons why I've kind of settled for this more sort of Disney-esque uh, Davy Crockett Wild Frontier yeehaw kind of look um, because like I say most most modern buildings now in North America uh, most sort of Inuit buildings are, are just sort of regular buildings I use the term Inuit I know a lot of people uh, have a bit of an issue between whether or not you should say Inuit or Eskimo um, as far as I can tell Inuit now is the um, is the correct terminology um, a lot of places don't use the term Eskimo because it was considered derogatory um, it's because it was given to non Inuit to Inuits by non Inuits and was said to mean eater of raw meat um, that's relatively been debunked now most linguists believe that Eskimo is actually derived from an uh, Jabi word meaning to net snowshoes interesting enough or quite specific thing to be called after that's like saying uh, English comes from to drink tea which wouldn't surprise me if it was to be honest because that we do a lot I'm actually sipping on some tea as we record this video so I am a walking stereotype um, and so but no no now it's used for Inuit specifically um, uh, refers to uh, Eastern um, Can uh, Canadian areas uh, and like I say the the language they use for the most part is Inukitut Inukitut excuse me so uh, yeah, restroom is coming along nicely. Again, lots of wood, lots of rope. Um, the biggest issue I had with uh, with these builds is that there's um, uh, quite a few pieces that you can't recolor in the game. And now it doesn't fuss me too much, and I, it certainly doesn't fuss me as much as it does others because I'm quite color blind. Uh, if I'm very color blind, actually, I have a, I have Tritonopia. Um, before you all comment, I really appreciate it. Those glasses don't work for me. I have to say this every time I mention my color blindness because I get. 50 comments saying you can get some sunglasses that make it work they don't work unfortunately they're not for my type of color blindness but thank you i appreciate the help um but yeah it does mean that i uh, i often stick with the base colors the game gives us because i kind of know they're right and if i do go into color um you know i'll, I'll often use like hex patterns online and stuff like that to make them work but yeah i've noticed there's quite a few um that don't actually uh, recolor and there's also a few in the game that say recolorable that aren't as well which is kind of interesting so hopefully we'll see more of those in in the future or um, uh, you know, variations of them that they can recolor. I'm using trash cans a lot here, you'll see. Um, in Planet Coaster, we had an awesome uh, couple of barrier pieces. I don't think we got them with launch, but later on they came. Uh, some barrier pieces that you can kind of hide under the path to stop guests walking over certain bits of path. Um, the only things I can find in this uh, in this version, in Planet Zoo, that do that are benches and trash cans. Now, obviously, they sit down on benches, so they're only good in certain situations. But, um, yeah, the trash cans work. So a lot of under sort of anything on the path... Like the uh, like that that sign that you just saw me make, but also the um, uh, the the fire pit there. There is a trash can, so um, it it works well enough. The only thing is, it does mean that guests will throw trash into it occasionally. With the fire pit, I don't particularly mind that. I mean, it's you know it's a bit bit nasty to be throwing 
trash into anywhere other than a trash can in real life but it kind of thematically makes sense that you could throw something into the trash uh, but yeah it might mean that occasionally they throw trash into fountains or, or whatever else um but uh, yeah that's so far at the moment that is the best we can do uh, next up we're doing the uh, the exterior of the restroom again this is kind of where the realism goes a little out the window we've got i just i just saw this it's actually an east asian piece this world this uh, uh what's the word this world whirlpool no what do i want to call it that that water thing water wheel i guess um but i just thought it looked really good and it broke up that large wall that was on the restroom there and it kind of gave the room uh, gave the building a double purpose you know it's a functioning restroom but then also you know you're right at the entrance of the park and you want it to kind of look nice so I've done something there to make it look uh, a little bit more interesting there. And again, that's one of your main things that you have to do with this game, uh, with the Planet series, and just, you know, these kind of creative simulation games in general, to be honest. I know people are always asking me for advice and tips on how to be more creative in these kind of games. If something is called East Asian Water Wheel or East Asian Stone, that doesn't mean you only have to use it for an East Asian build. In fact, for the most part, um, and Planet Coaster have, sorry, Frontier have acknowledged this as well, is that they try and design stuff that can be used in multiple uh, styles. So you'll have to find that a lot of the pieces are, are, even though they're a little themed, actually quite generic. Now, obviously, there's some incredibly highly themed pieces in the game. Um, a lot of the African set is, you know, really highly themed. Uh, you're going to struggle really using that in many other places unless maybe you could do some sort of Aztec builds with some of it um just just sort of general ab aboriginal builds uh, you'll probably be okay with but for the, a lot of the part that kind of uh, large pattern and bright pattern paintings and stuff are, are you know they're very specific you're not you're going to struggle to use them in other places but a lot of the pieces a lot of the pots and pans and all that kind of stuff uh, are actually made to be relatively generic and for the most part are recolorable I find a lot of the time that if there's like a pot with a pattern on or something, um, the uh, the pattern is two separate colours. So if you change both of those colours to be the same one, uh, then you actually just get a plain pot and then it's much more useful. In fact, I think I do that in a moment. There's a deck chair in the game that comes with a classic set. It's like a traditional stripy deck chair with like blue and white stripes. But because they let you change both the blue and the white, you can set them both to be more of a khaki colour and then you just get a relatively plain generic uh, outdoor chair which is really quite cool and um, which is what we use on the uh, on the uh, the patio area of this the the deck area of this building here uh, which is a, uh, a uh, information desk and gift shop so one thing I settled on very early in my own head when I started this series is we will not be doing interiors other than we're going to be building a large building for some uh, warmer climate animals, like I said, a, a, Central African, a Central American area. Obviously, we'll be working inside that glass house, uh, but any exterior buildings like this, restrooms, gift shops, restaurants, anything like that we build, I'm not doing interiors. As fun as they are to do, they take up so much time the only time you pretty much ever see them is when you're building them and then you zoom out and you never go back in there again. Um, and also they just clog up the game and, and make your computer run slower for very little return because again, you're very rarely in them. So no interiors, I'm putting my foot down. Interiors are great. I, I feel like I've done a couple of good ones over the years that I was really happy with the um, uh, with the restaurant we did in Azuri Garden, the pizza and pasta buffet. I thought that was a really good interior, how we how we made the pizzas and, and everything. Um, but yeah, no interiors here. I, I'm, I'm putting my foot down with myself. Not this, I'm sure people are watching and they don't really care, but I have to tell myself, no interiors. <laughs> um, so that's what we're doing here. So the exterior of this is, uh, and then basically guests are going to clip through the door as they go in. I'm fine with it. I know some people don't like it. Like it. I'm happy with guests clipping through doors. Um, you know, in many games, guests kind of wander into TARDIS style boxes anyway, right? So I, I, I'm personally okay with it and I'm pretending that's how it is. So any staff rooms, all that kind of stuff, uh, no interiors. Unless, of course, the game gives you an interior already, like some of them they do now. We'll try and work those in so that we've got a few windows that, uh, that you can actually, actually see into stuff, which is pretty cool. This building itself is just um, is based on a house I found basically. Um, I've got a Pinterest board for this uh, for Nunu Kanata, so uh, Nuna Kanata, excuse me. So I'll put that in the description. Um, basically, I've just gone through and found lots of awesome log cabins, some exterior shots of uh, of the wilderness, some exterior shots of the Yukon, uh, things like that, which I'm going to be using as uh, a sort of like a smorgasbord, a, a palette, I suppose, from uh, for how to build in this park. But again, yeah, very sort of um, very sort of northern architecture stone wood very naturalistic uh, use uh, of material 
and that idea that the building sort of blends into the nature around it is something that I really want to try and get across here. Um, so that's uh, that's what I'm using. But yeah, a lot of the reference images I've got are actually just really nice people, nice houses that people own, um, as opposed to being sort of images from zoos or whatever. Um, a lot of zoos I found um, are very serviceable in their architecture. They build what they need to build as opposed to what necessarily looks good. Um, the actual exhibits themselves, often they will create really great architecture for exhibits but as far as buildings go structures go um they're often very uh sort of uh, utilitarian really and they do what they need to do as opposed to necessarily looking good found this piece i thought the handle looked a little bit like an axe so we're gonna have that as a again this is all just showy stuff this is a little bit more theme parky than zoo necessarily although one thing i did notice at the um at the toronto zoo that we visited the other day um was that they did have a few set pieces similar to this that they used as um information pieces to sort of share information on various exhibits that had taken uh, various uh, excursions sorry that had either taken place in the area or taken place on behalf of the zoo you know some of the zoo staff had gone out uh, they had an awesome little tent set up with all the excursion stuff inside so uh, there is precedent for these sort of uh, set pieces these little showy pieces uh, but for the most part this is kind of my sort of theme park knowledge uh, more coming out than, than anything else uh, so the building's near enough climbing to an end now. Sign-wise, signs are a bit tricky in this one. There's not many generic-y signs. I'm about to go for this one, which is uh, actually part of the British architecture, I think, or the classic, I think they call it, but it's basically British, right? Um, and it's about the best one we've got. There's a couple that are East Asian ones that are kind of uh, generic, but yeah, for the most part, the signs very much wear their uh, theme on their sleeves there. So the last things we do here are a little bit of stonework. We're bringing out some um, uh, foliage. As far as the foliage is concerned, it's lots of grasses, lots of um, hardy, hardy kind of planting here. A little bit of colour occasionally with some really light flowering. Um, but for the most part, yeah, lots of ferns, lots of uh, pines, that kind of thing. No exper expert on foliage at all. You know, I'm no Mike Sheets. But uh, yeah, definitely sort of trying to keep towards that sort of uh, light flowering and fern style. So let's move into some real-time footage where we're basically looking at some staff mope about because I haven't got a staff room yet. These are the guys... Look at this, this is right from having a soul patch, a little weirdo. So as you come into the park, uh, as you come into the zoo, we come straight down into this uh, fire pit area. I have hidden benches in uh, in these, so you may get the occasional guest. I don't know whether they'll bother coming down here. But again, really quite happy with the rockery here. Uh, with some very light planting inside and some uh, and some lots of wood fencing. Again, it really just sort of... I always have to build one thing that kind of acts as a pallet for the park I'm building or a pallet for the zoom building. So in Pinewood Hills, we got that um, uh, pagoda set up straight away, the pavilion building that was like, that is... It just sort of uh, boils down what I want to do in the whole thing um, into into something very quick so that's what we wanted to do there and then as you come off to the right there's a slight height variation here as we can come up into the gifts and the information building i'm quite happy with how that turns out although i think i might need to maybe overhang that a little there actually so this side it's not so much of a problem because we're coming down to the to the to a deck there but yeah i think that fe that there needs to overhang a little so i'll sort that out then this side we've got a nice little vignette here with um uh, the water wheel and then a very serviceable restroom there that will eventually be a little bit more sort of off the beaten track once we build up some more foliage here. But you've got a sign here telling you it's restrooms, uh, exit and parking, and then Frontier Ridge, which is going to be one of the uh, the zoo areas that we get into in a moment. The only thing I did an off camera I wanted to show you is this. Now this is my attempt at an Inukshuk, um, an Inukshuk is a stone um, statue very often in the shape of a man um, that are used across the Arctic region as kind of like waypoints really. They're used as navigation or uh, points of interest, markers for routes, uh, you know, fishing spots, hunting grounds, that kind of thing. Uh, the word itself Inukshuk means uh, that which acts in the capacity of a human. There's a, a very famous one of these called the Hammer of Thor that was um, originally believed to have been plate erected by Vikings, hence the name, but actually modern scholars now believe it's a, an Anukshuk place by uh, Inuits. And these days it's come as a sort of uh, cultural symbol of the uh, of the Inuits. Now it's even uh, features quite heavily on the flag of Nunavut, which is the easternmost uh, province of, uh, eastern northeasternmost province of Canada, uh, where a lot of the snow is. Uh, so we'll have a lot of these around. I've had to 
to use the sort of Asian brick pieces, so it's a little square, although you do get some that are relatively chiseled. Uh, they're often made out of more sort of like natural rock. A lot of the rocks in the game are a bit too big for it, unfortunately, but we'll definitely have a few more of these. Like I say, some of them have the sort of semblance of a man, other ones are more just sort of like like totemic almost, um, but we're going to be having those at sort of key areas. in the, This one probably won't stay here. Uh, we're going to have these at sort of key areas around the zoo. And there's a better look of it from higher up. Unfortunately, we can't get rid of this building. Now, it's not its not incredibly aggressive. It's relatively plain, at least, luckily. Um, but that is obviously going to be where the zoo entrance is. I'm not fussed about car parks or anything like that in these little mini-series, to be honest. I, um, I'd much rather sort of jump in and, and, and dive in and get started on the zoo. But from here, I think it's a really great start. You can see um, sort of the, the style and the sort of scale we're going for. And uh, I hope, hopefully, episode two will start on some sort of animal. But um, I don't know, it may well be an Another, another episode where we take the path out and start to sort of plan out where the space is going to be. We certainly ain't filling this, I'll tell you that much for free. This is going to be a relatively small one because there's only sort of sort of five major habitat animals that we're placing into this one. Uh, one of them, though, we are going to try and get a transport ride in. One of them I would like to be a bit further out. Uh, most likely the Timberwolf Conservation Area. I want to be a little bit out that you can travel out via train. Uh, something like Rafiki Watch in Animal Kingdom, if you, if you can imagine that. Uh, there's, a, there's a sort of uh, transport out to go and see a separate area away from the Hustle and bustle of the main park uh, but overall i'm happy with it so far i'd love some feedback so let me know what you think uh, any references you can think of that might help uh, i really would appreciate it until the next one be good